the universe is just like that. Our universe started out simple and low entropy. In the future, the stars will die, the black holes will evaporate, it'll be dark, empty, and again, simple, but high entropy. It's in between that things like us, complicated, intricate systems that feed off of the increasing entropy of the universe can and do come into existence. It's widely believed that the universe is a product of space and time. In many physical theories, including classical physics and Einstein's theory of general relativity, the universe is commonly described as having three dimensions of space and one dimension of time, forming a four-dimensional space-time. So in other words, it can be said that reality is a product of space and time, as what we observe around us is a part of our universe. But to observe reality, consciousness is required. Is there a tangible reality that exists independently of us? Does an objective reality exist? Or is everything, including space and time, shaped by the perceptions of those who observe it? These questions have persisted since the dawn of humanity. Famous American theoretical physicist Sean Carroll recently said that time doesn't exist. It's the construction of the human mind that is used to label and distinguish the events. So what is reality? Does it truly exist? Is it just a projection of our consciousness and imagination? Let's find out. When considering reality, we often assume that what we see, hear, and experience accurately represents the world. However, neuroscience and philosophy present differing views on the nature of reality and our perception of it. Neuroscience suggests that our brains construct our reality. It processes input from our senses, forming a model of the world we encounter. This model is what we label as reality. Our brains utilize this model to predict future events based on past experiences and sensory input. Yet, how precise is this model of reality? Could it be that our brains are shaping a distorted version of the surrounding world? Research indicates that our perceptions aren't always reliable, and our brains can easily be misled. Optical illusions, for instance, show how simple visual stimuli can trick our brains. Philosophy, on the other hand, asserts that reality exists independently of our minds. It's something external to our brains and can be understood through reason and observation. According to this perspective, reality is objective and persists whether we perceive it or not. However, this leads to the question of how we can truly comprehend reality. If we depend on our senses to perceive the world, and our senses are fallible, how can we ensure the accuracy of our perceptions? This poses a central challenge in philosophy, known as the problem of knowledge. One potential solution is to rely on reason and logic to grasp reality. Through reason and observation, we can draw conclusions about the nature of reality that aren't solely reliant on our subjective perceptions. Yet even this approach isn't foolproof. Our reasoning can be flawed, and our observations can be swayed by preconceptions and biases. Neither neuroscience nor philosophy seems to provide a complete understanding of how we perceive the world. The truth may lie somewhere in between, involving our sensory input, cognitive processes, and reasoning abilities. The distinction between things in themselves and things as they appear has been a long-standing concern for philosophers. How does this relate to modern physics, particularly the narrative of quantum theory? Such questions have plagued the theory since its inception in the 1920s. Since the revelation that atomic and subatomic particles display both localized particle-like properties and delocalized wave-like properties, physicists have engaged in a debate about our knowledge of the true nature of physical reality. Parmenides, a prominent pre-Socratic thinker, discussed the nature of reality, suggesting that the visible world is an illusion. According to him, the genuine nature of the world is beyond our senses, but graspable through reason. Moreover, this real world is unchanging, unified, and timeless. Parmenides started by asserting that we cannot comprehend nothingness rationally. Believing that nothingness cannot exist, he argued against the existence of empty space. Without empty space, he insisted that motion was not feasible. This line of thought led him to reject concepts like change, difference, and ending. Shifting focus to our preconceived world, he regarded it as mere appearances. His enduring proposition that our senses are ineffective in seeking truth challenges the reality of the physical world. 
So what implications does this have for us? Quantum mechanics emerged from the intense pursuit of describing the infinitesimally small, aiming to uncover increasingly minute aspects of physical reality. Niels Bohr refined the theory by envisioning the atom as a positively charged nucleus with negatively charged electrons orbiting, resembling a miniature solar system. Things took a perplexing turn when the concealed realm of the infinitesimal gradually unveiled itself. The microscopic world proved fundamentally distinct from the familiar world governed by our standard physical laws. It operated under different principles, introducing uncertainty into the equation. Despite the mysterious nature of this hidden reality, the precision of quantum mechanics calculations implies its existence, even though it eludes direct perception. At the core of this investigation is the idea of reductionism, suggesting that intricate phenomena can be simplified to their basic components. When it comes to the universe, this entails pinpointing the smallest, essential units of matter and energy, composing everything we observe. In chemistry, we discover that the smallest unit of water is a water molecule, and any volume of water is comprised of an immense number of identical water molecules. According to modern physics, these foundational components manifest as subatomic particles like electrons, quarks, and neutrinos. These particles are considered the fundamental building blocks of matter, and the various combinations of these particles make up all the matter present in our surroundings. Yet, the narrative extends beyond particles. The essential constituents of the cosmos reach into the very essence of space and time itself. According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, space and time are not distinct entities, but are intertwined, creating a unified four-dimensional fabric known as space-time. In this framework, the universe isn't just composed of particles moving through space. It's a dynamic interplay between matter and the curvature of space-time itself. This interaction results in phenomena like gravity, which occurs due to the warping of space-time by massive objects. Over time, scientists have proposed various ideas about the fundamental building blocks of the cosmos. One widely considered concept is information, suggesting that reality is constructed from information. While initially abstract, recent advancements in information theory demonstrate that information is a fundamental aspect of the universe. The information serves as a measure of uncertainty in a system, indicating how much is unknown about it. This encompasses various aspects, from the position and momentum of particles to the characteristics of black holes. In the realm of quantum mechanics, information holds a central role. The well-known observer effect highlights that the act of measuring a quantum system can fundamentally change its state. This means that actively measuring or acquiring information is a crucial aspect of the quantum world. Additionally, recent theories, like the holographic principle, propose that information could be the foundation of space-time itself. Now, This concept suggests that the information in a three-dimensional space can be encoded onto a two-dimensional surface, similar to a hologram. This implies that the universe might be inherently holographic, with information acting as the fundamental building blocks of reality. Information operates at both the macro level and the subatomic level. Some scientists argue that information is a unique candidate as a fundamental building block capable of explaining its own existence. This is because information generates additional information, requiring compression, and thereby producing more information in the process. Space-time and matter share the same building blocks, emerging sequentially. Information is not confined only to the surface of a specific space, but exists within the space itself. This leads to the observation that entangled quantum information plays a crucial role not only in the formation of space-time, but also directly contributes to the emergence of ordinary matter, dark matter, and dark energy. Recent progress in quantum computing has demonstrated that information can be encoded in the state of individual particles, allowing manipulation for intricate calculations. This suggests that the universe is a kind of quantum computer, with each particle acting as a bit of information that can be processed to generate new information. Scientific experiments have proved that we're not directly perceiving reality. Instead, we're observing a narrative crafted for us. Most of the time, the story our brains construct aligns with the tangible world, but not always. Our brains unconsciously manipulate our perception of reality to align with our desires or expectations, filling gaps with past experiences. If the universe generated brains, could it be a colossal superbrain itself? Everything we consider real consists of minute measurements that are challenging to deem real in isolation. 
Our senses function as biochemical measuring tools, converting imperceptible matter into tangible entities for us to comprehend. They don't unveil reality, but they certainly assist us in navigating and surviving. The information we receive from the universe is processed in the brain rather than directly perceived. The brain acts as a filter, shaping our understanding of reality, while the true world of information remains hidden. A notable discovery is that the universe is not locally real, meaning objects don't have fixed properties independent of observation. For instance, an apple may not have a definite color when observed. In the realm of quantum physics, investigations challenge the idea that objects are solely influenced by their surroundings and may lack fixed properties before measurement. This unsettling revelation implies a departure from the traditional notion of local reality in the universe. Three theoretical physicists, John Clauser, Anton Zellinger, and Alan Aspect were jointly honored with the 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics for their 1972 experiment and subsequent experiments challenging the idea of local realism in the universe. Their work clarified the true implications of quantum mechanics. Their findings revealed that the universe cannot adhere to local realism, as particles lack definite spin-up or spin-down properties before observation or measurement. This implies that merely observing a particle alters its state, going against the principles of local realism. In simpler terms, the universe is real, but its reality is contingent on observation. The Nobel Prize-winning experiment also illustrated that two particles, regardless of distance, can remain entangled in the quantum realm. This contradicts local realism and Einstein's theory of relativity, as their assumption suggests that influences cannot travel faster than the speed of light. In theory, two particles could be at the opposite ends of the observable universe and still remain entangled, a concept known as non-locality. Similarly, the universe can't be local, yet quantum mechanics demonstrates long-distance interactions are possible. However, we still don't know which of these properties is false, or if they both are. What we do know is they can't both be true simultaneously. Our consciousness filters and interprets sensory information based on past experiences, biases, and beliefs. Therefore, reality can be viewed as a subjective construct shaped by our individual consciousness. The modern concept of consciousness is often linked to Locke's essay on human understanding, published in 1690. Locke defines consciousness as a perception of what occurs in a person's own mind. This suggests it functions as an internal observer, enabling us to perceive and contemplate our thoughts, feelings, and experiences. However, this prompts the question of how consciousness originates initially. What gives rise to this internal observer, and how does it connect with the physical processes of the brain? William James is often credited with popularizing the idea that human consciousness functions like a stream in his Principles of Psychology from 1890. According to James, the stream of thought is governed by five characteristics. Each thought tends to be a part of a personal consciousness. Within each personal consciousness, thought is always changing, sensibly continuous, and seems to deal with objects independent of itself. It's interested in some parts of these objects to the exclusion of others. James believed that consciousness was not merely a collection of isolated mental events, but rather a dynamic process in constant flux. He used the metaphor of a stream to depict the continuous flow of consciousness, with each momentary experience being a part of the overall current consciousness. James suggests that consciousness goes beyond being a passive observer and actively shapes our experiences. Our thoughts, feelings, and perceptions continuously interact, forming a stream of thought that guides us through the day. A growing theory proposes that consciousness arises from integrated information processing in the brain. Rather than emerging from specific brain regions, it's viewed as an emergent property of the entire brain. In simpler terms, consciousness results from intricate interactions among the billions of neurons, each contributing to the overall pattern of brain activity. However, this theory doesn't clarify whether all organisms possess consciousness. While humans and some animals may have it, the question remains, do bacteria and plants lack consciousness? Attempts with postulates, theories, and laws leave us with a puzzling mystery that challenges our fundamental understanding of the natural world. Natural laws, which govern the behavior of particles and the movement of energy, don't appear to necessitate the existence of consciousness and certainly don't seem to provide any evolutionary advantages. But why does consciousness exist? There are only two possible explanations. 
The first is that there are unknown forces at play, causing the emergence of this mysterious experience. Perhaps there are evolutionary pressures favoring the development of consciousness, or maybe there are other factors that we're not aware of. The second explanation is that consciousness is a product we create, a function we serve as human beings. We generate the experience, crafting the qualia that form our subjective experiences. But for whom do we create this product, and how is it received? These questions remain unclear, leaving us with more questions than answers. So here we are, creating this phenomenon called consciousness that seems to lack a clear purpose. It's an experience and must, therefore, function as such. The only logical conclusion is to consider that this phenomenon serves someone else, suggesting that everything we know and experience, including reality itself, is a simulation crafted by some unseen and unknowable entity. Imagine a world where people, the stars above, the ground beneath our feet, and even our bodies and minds were a sophisticated illusion. What if the reality we encounter daily is nothing more than a highly realistic simulation designed by an advanced civilization or a computer program? This idea is familiar from science fiction books and films, including the 1999 blockbuster movie The Matrix. Many physicists and philosophers suggest that living in a simulation is a plausible possibility. According to Nick Bostrom, a strong proponent of this theory, if we are indeed in a simulation, then the universe we observe is just a small part of the entire physical existence. Bostrom's influential paper titled, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation?, proposes that future generations might possess megacomputers capable of running detailed simulations for their ancestors. Most minds like ours would belong to simulated individuals created by advanced descendants rather than the original biological race. It's reasonable to assume that we're more likely among the simulated minds than the original biological ones. Since then, this concept has gained popularity in both popular culture and the scientific community. Elon Musk, known for founding SpaceX and Tesla, stated that the likelihood of us existing in a base reality is extremely low, estimated at one in billions. Physicist Neil deGrasse Tyson also weighed in, suggesting that the chance of our universe being a simulation is more favorable than 50-50. Yet the fundamental question persists. If our reality is a computer simulation, who programmed it originally? According to Chalmers, the original programmer might be a teenager casually running multiple universes in the background while hacking on a computer. Alternatively, it could be someone omniscient and all-powerful overseeing our world. Simulation theory is an extension of an age-old philosophical debate about the unknowability of reality. However, some argue that the simulation hypothesis has its flaws. Critics of simulation theory highlight the lack of empirical evidence supporting the idea that our existence is simulated. They argue that even if we were within a simulation, proving it would be impossible as our understanding would be confined to the rules set by the simulation itself. Now, This raises the overarching question, do we truly inhabit a simulated reality? And if so, what implications does this hold? If our existence is merely a computer program, what defines the essence of our being? Are we nothing more than digital entities devoid of genuine free will and agency? Or could there be a deeper layer to our existence? Can we ever grasp and perceive the actual, untainted information of the world, transcending the illusory perceptions crafted by the brain for us to comprehend our surroundings? The inquiry into whether our existence is a simulation or not remains a captivating and enigmatic one. It challenges our comprehension of the world and ourselves, urging us to confront the constraints of our knowledge and perception. While the simulation argument sparks fascinating contemplation, it's crucial to approach it with balanced skepticism and humility. As we persist in pushing technological boundaries and exploring scientific frontiers, there may come a time where we can definitely answer this question. Until then, we should maintain an openness to the unknown, continuously seeking fresh insights and perspectives on the world that surrounds us. In the pursuit of understanding, whether we live in a simulation, it's important to recognize the limits of our current knowledge and focus on the concrete aspects of our reality. As Carl Sagan suggested, we serve as a means for the universe to understand itself. And since the advent of language, humans have pondered speculatively about reality and our beginnings. Language, the tool that allowed us to think and imagine, initiated a period of deep questioning about our existence. As time passed, our ponderings evolved, 
taking us on a journey to uncover the origins of our existence and assign meaning to the universe, along with the constant flow of information it provides. The question of whether we live in a simulation captivates our minds, challenging our understanding of the world. It prompts us to confront the limitations in our knowledge and perception, serving as a catalyst for deep reflection. The simulation argument, with its intriguing concept, encourages us to explore the fabric of reality and question our consciousness. Yet, as we engage with this thought-provoking idea, it's crucial to approach it with skepticism and humility. While the notion of a simulated reality is intellectually stimulating, we should resist letting biases shape the narrative. Instead, we should focus on empirical aspects, what we can measure and observe. Embracing the tangible reality around us enables a deeper understanding of the universe and our place within it. This approach encourages appreciation for the intricacies of the natural world, the complexities of human relationships, and the beauty in the simplicity of daily experiences. Grounding ourselves in the observable fosters a nuanced understanding that goes beyond theoretical constructs. In our ongoing quest for answers, it's important to approach the intersection of technology and philosophy with a thoughtful mindset. As we push the limits of technological innovation and scientific exploration, the possibility of definitively answering the simulation question becomes intriguing. However, until that moment arrives, we should stay open to the vast unknown. Ultimately, embracing the reality we can measure and observe empowers us to live meaningfully in the present. It encourages us to seek understanding without imposing preconceived notions, allowing us to appreciate the richness of the universe and our role within it. Navigating this complex existence, the idea of the simulation hypothesis reminds us to balance curiosity with the practical acknowledgement of the realities shaping our everyday lives. Thanks for watching this video. We would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content.